Hi again, students. Welcome back to Be Proficient in English with Binus University. So today's topic, we'll be talking about something grammatical. And this is important because once you produce a sentence, you need to know how to produce a sentence properly. And for that, hopefully, this topic would be able to help you use proper English expressions when you write, when you speak, or even when you read and listen. And secondly, uh, I would expect that you would be able to evaluate your ability to produce proper English expressions, in, uh, especially in producing if clause or if sentences. Now, let's talk about if. There are at least three if clauses. Yeah, if conditional number one, two, and three. But today, we are going to focus on if clause number one. I like it so much when I was a student myself because when I was asked to actually produce sentences using if, my imagination was kind of running wild. So I produced a lot of sentences with a lot of ifs. Yeah. So I hope it, it goes the same thing to you. Now, let's see. What can the first if do? What, what is the functions of the first if uh, when we produce it in our daily conversation. The first one is to make prediction. Let's say you are following the, the World Cup soccer or football right now. You love to make prediction, right? So let's say you are championing or you want Japan to win the match against Croatia or another team. And then you say, you make your predictions. I predict if Japan plays offensively, they will win the game. And that is a very natural way of using if. And then you are making prediction. What about the second one? Make promises. As a child, as a teenager now, have you ever heard promises made by other people to you? I believe they have. You have. Parents, especially, they occasionally make promises to you. If you do something, if you do something great, then they will, you will get a reward from your parents. If you get 95 for your math score, then you will get a reward. There is a natural way of using if in the sentence. What about express possibilities? Well, there are a lot you can say when you want to express possibilities using if. For example, if you come late, what will happen to school? Well, if you come late to school, one thing for sure, yeah, you will miss the class. If you come late to school, your teacher might be mad at you. If you are late to school, your, your friends might be unhappy about it because you are going to interrupt them. Right? So you can use if number one or if conditional number one to also express possibilities. What about causes and sequences? Yeah. Now, let's say if you don't brush your teeth in the morning, what will happen to you? What will happen to your social life after that? Right? Okay, so those are the functions of if. Let's talk about um, how it is being uh, produced. Yeah. Let's talk about the structure first. If you want to produce an if clause sentence, yeah, uh, a sentence that involves if in the process, yeah. So there are uh, two ways to produce it. I think they are very easy to identify. First, if you are going to use if yeah, in the beginning of the sentence, yeah, make sure you have this. Make sure you have a comma. And then followed by the main clause. Yeah. Remember, if clause is not a full sentence. Yeah. When it is just if it is not a full sentence, so it is meaningless. So you have to have a main clause. You have to have a, a clause that has a subject and a predicate there in order to make it like a meaning one meaningful sentence. The second one is you put the main clause first in the beginning, then uh, you follow it up with an if clause. What is the difference? The difference is that you don't have a comma, but you have a period. Well, both of the sentences have periods in the end, but what I'm trying to say here, don't put a comma in the middle when you start it off with a main clause. Remember? When it is an if clause, it is always a condition. And then when it is a main clause, it is always a result. I hope it makes sense to you. But let's have a look at 
you know, one example. Well, it happens to be a long one, and this one is a masterpiece, uh, a poem by Roger Kipling. Let's read it together. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good, nor talk too wise. I'm going to let you continue reading this, but I'm going to jump to the very last uh, sentence, because the, the poem is literally starts with if in the beginning of, of every line, but I'm going to just jump into the final uh, two uh, lines in the end of the poem. Yeah, so I will read this for you. Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you will be a man, my son. So this is the, the poet talking to his son. And as you can see, the if clauses are there from the very beginning of the line up to the near the end of the poem. And then the poet, Rudyard Kipling in this case, would it put a main clause in the end, right? So as you can see, there are a lot of commas there. Yeah, some people say that when you write a poem, you may just, uh, you know, disregard the grammar. But I think this is one of the example in which grammar is properly used. Let's move on. So if you want to produce a proper clause in this case, what do you need to do? Number one, yeah, remember that a sentence begins by if, it's not a full sentence, yeah? So that's why you need a main clause. You need to have another clause that has a subject and a predicate. And then number two, the main clause is normally the result and the if clause is the condition, right? This is the conditions. If you go to school by bus, that is your condition. You will have a good time, yeah? That is the main clause. Right? You have a good time is the result. Yeah? If you go to school, why is it a good time? Why am I saying that going to school by bus is having a good time? It's something to do with good time. Perhaps you will meet your friends there. All right. And number three, the condition is expressed in present tense and the main clause is expressed in future tense. It is always followed by will. If you do, if you do this, you will get that. If you become this, you will experience something else. All right, so always in press, a combination between present and future. Okay, let's do a, a little practice. Now, if you turn up the AC, you see the comma there, right? If you turn up the AC, what will happen? Let me hear you say it. Okay, correct. That's what, you know, that's what I would like to say as well. The room will be stuffy and hot, right? Okay, what about the second one? If you turn off the AC, what will happen? Do you have any other, you know, main clothes you can think of? What about this? Nobody will want to stay. That is the consequences, right? Because it's, it's hot and stuffy, nobody will want to stay in the room. Great, good job. What about the second one? If you get 85 for your math test, so this mostly coming from your parents or your grandma, grandpa, what will happen to you? Well, chances is, when you were a kid, when you were in elementary school, this is what you will hear. I will buy you a PS5 or 4 or 3 or 2, you know, if you live uh, long enough to have experience of PS2 or 3. All right, number, number two, if you get 85 for your math test, what will you get? You will make yourself proud and that is important, yeah? Okay. Now, lastly, last sentence, last practice. The team will win the match if what? What, what do you think? This is like a prediction, right? The star player plays. It's always the star players, right? Even though it's a team play. All right, and lastly, what do you think? The team will win the match if they play offensively. But there are teams who play uh, defensively and they win, right? So, of course, yeah. All right, thank you. So, that would be it for today. I hope you have learned uh, a thing or two about uh, producing if uh, clauses, especially the first uh, conditional, 
and you have learned that they are uh, they can be used to express a lot of functional uh, conversation and interaction. Good luck and see you in the next topic.